Hey guys, in today's video we'll be looking at our various knots and groups we would use to initiate leg attacks. So we're not necessarily focusing on the complete package whip position, but we're just looking at how we tie our hands or our body onto a particular part of the leg when we're attacking it. So we're going to start first with the most basic, which is a straight ankle lock. Now dealing with the ankle lock, we want to make sure when we attack the ankle lock, we've got one of two places to position the opponent's Achilles. The straight ankle lock is going to work by me either taking the blade of the forearm, the, the bony part of the forearm, or the wrist, have it pointing upwards into the Achilles. So when I wrap, I'm putting the blade on the Achilles and I'm placing the um, toes in my armpit. So I'm chicken winging on the toes and I've got that blade in the Achilles. Now when I close my hands, I can either make a fist and grab over like I would for a guillotine finish, and then take my elbow and chop it down to my side. And then I've got that basic lock for a straight ankle lock. The second way of finishing that is to go really deep. So to take the foot and go right in deep into the crook of my bicep and my forearm. Again, the position is high on the Achilles and high on the toes with my armpit. So one, two, get my elbow in touch. I go deep with the foot in my armpit, the toes in my armpit my bicep and forearm on the Achilles, elbows tight, and that's how I finish my second type of ankle lock. The heel hook. When attacking the heel hook, we want to use the lower part of my forearm around the heel. This is what people find quite confusing, which it's not, it's quite simple. When you attack the heel hook, an incorrect heel hook will have the heel sitting on top of my forearm, and it will very easily slip off. The correct way is to place the toes in the armpit and then have the lower part of my wrist circled deep around the heel. So the heel has been completely encircled by my forearm. As low as my wrist, then I can make a connection. I can do a gable grip by grabbing over my thumbs, gable, or I can do a butterfly grip where I grab my forearms and then look to apply the pressure. Here, I'm pulling the foot in towards me and I've got pressure on the toes and pressure on the instep. The heel is completely exposed. When I lock up the hip, that's when I will have a very tight heel hook. So one more time, the heel hook on the blade close to the wrist, the toes under the armpit, the foot being pulled in towards me, and the heel completely encircled. It's kind of slipping off your forearm. More than likely, you've got the heel too close to your bicep and forearm and it's quite easy for the foot to slip off. The closer you have to the wrist, much harder for the foot to slip off. We're then gonna look at the toe hold. The toe hold can be attacked from a variety of positions. It works by clamping on the foot, high up on the toes, and creating a figure four lock, like you would for a kimura, but on the foot. So when I do a toe hold, I can either grab like a C cup on the toes here, or I can make a clamp and come over the toes. So I either hold it here or there. One has my thumb encircling the foot, the other has my thumb and fingers on the same side. When I grab a toe hold, it's wrong to grab low on the foot. I want to grab high on that pinky. I then come around the ankle, I get my bicep, chest, pec, lat involved in the control, I chicken wing, I keep my elbow tight, and then I look to grab onto the foot. Now we're not going to work in the finish, we're just looking at the actual tie up of the hands. One, two, three. When doing a reverse heel hook, the setup is the same as a heel hook. I'm just entering from a different position. Now the toes, the big toe, is in my armpit. The low end of my forearm to my wrist is really low, circling the heel. Again, keeping my body involved, I'm going to either go gable grip and look to rotate, or I can go butterfly grip, hugging the calf and the foot into my body and then looking to rotate outwards body and then looking to rotate outwards to get the finish. Knee bar. The knee bar has to have the opponent's knee facing perpendicular into my chest. So Kelly's on her side. It has to be running perpendicular to me. Regardless of how we got into this position, 
Now knee bar is generally a universal end finish. We've got to have the knee in towards us. If the knee has gone past my groin line, I'm not going to finish the knee bar. I want to make sure that knee is on the groin or above. I want to have my chest connected to the opponent's leg. I want to have my wrist control high under the Achilles. I've got to be careful in this position that the opponent doesn't just freely rotate her leg. If she does, I lose the angle in which to get a hyperextension. If the opponent rotates all the way around and I've got the back of their knee flush on my chest, if I extend my hips now, I would just get a natural bend in the leg. Which is why in a knee bar we have to ensure that our body, whether we're on top here or whether the opponent's on their side, is that their knee is flush into my body, toes facing me, my chest connected to the shin where I can put maximum pressure into the knee. So those lockup guys are universal. It is now our job to find the position to be able to successfully lock up the rest of their body to have the pressure of the submission go into the desired joint or ligament. This episode is just an introduction in how to lock up your submissions. The entry points and the final controls we will do in a later video. Guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.